Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at using Hideline and Intersect with Model to preserve components. All right, so what did that mean? <laughs> exactly. Uh, what I want to do is take a look at, so Luke Whitelock was on Fireside Chat uh, a few weeks ago, and he showed some really cool stuff he did, just really cool use of components. He used a lot of components, repeating them over and over and again. Uh, one of the things he does, he created this window where he created these this geometry repeated in a radial array, and then when he liked how it looked, he grabbed all those pieces and did a union solid tool to make one piece. And that's cool, there's nothing wrong with that, it's great. But I started thinking, well, what if I want to maintain that geometry so I can edit it more? What if I'm not ready to surrender it into uh, a single piece of geometry? Could I get the intersecting lines that I want but not have to do that? And the answer is yes. And we're going to take a look at doing that right now. Okay, so we're starting with, I have a wall here with kind of a circular opening, and I just created a little shape. This is just lines and arcs and then Real simple. I just selected it, made it into a component. Uh, this is the piece we're going to work with to start. So I'm going to grab this geometry right by the center of this tine, I guess we would call it. And uh, here I will align it with the back, oops, the back center like that. Okay. Looks good. So it's lined up, it's flattened back. Um, all right. I'm going to go ahead and use rotate now. I'm going to find the center of the circle. Go to that point, and I'm going to use these edges of my circle. This is a low quality circle, it's only 24 sides, but I'm going to click here, hit my modifier key, option control to go one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to type 5x, and there we go. So we got a, we got a start of a, our fancy window here. Looks pretty good, everything's overlapping, looks nice. It is paper thin, so it's just one, one uh, you know, surface. So I'm going to do a little work here. I'm going to start by double clicking into one. Now, as soon as I do this, if you look at view component edit, I have hide rest of model and hide similar components turned on. So anytime I enter a component, it's going to hide other copies of that component as well as everything else in the model. Okay, so what I want to do, I want to start by giving this some depth. So I'm just going to use push pull to pull it out a little bit like this. So I do have, you see here, um, I have a couple spots where I didn't weld these edges, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this up while I'm in here. I'm going to go to Erase, hit my Modifier key, again, Option or Control, to smooth those lines so I don't have extra break lines. Remember, one of the things I'm looking for in this is something that looks like a finished piece, even though it's a bunch of separate components. Having those break lines is a step in the wrong direction. Okay, so there, that's looking pretty good. Uh, I'm going to add a little more here. Need, I need something else. I'm going to push this back just a bit, and I'm going to offset this, I don't know, uh, approximately that much. Um, here, I don't want to actually have this. I'm going to create a bevel around this. I don't want to bevel up here on the top, so I'm going to grab these, move them straight up, and grab my bevel at the bottom, move that straight down. All right, and then I can just grab this piece and I can pull it out. I can hit the left arrow to constrain to the green axis and just pull it out, give myself that little bevel. Ooh, yeah. See, that's what I needed. That's a little more detail there. Um, while I'm in here, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup. For whatever reason, I got a break line right here. So I'll just, again, smooth that line. And then I didn't get a crease right here. So I'm going to go ahead and force that crease. You can always draw lines over hidden lines, and it will force that geometry to show up. That's perfect. That's what I want. If I click out here, yeah, we're getting there. Look at this. This is looking pretty cool. So two things that are hitting me right now. This is the crux. This is the, the reason we're all here today. The two things I want to clean up. One is right here. See this line? This line shouldn't be here. This is a continuous piece. And then see down here, I look at this. See I have this crease here, crease here. This piece runs into the frame and I don't have a line there. Those are the kind of lines I want to find. This, that was the stuff that, so... If I select these all just like Luke did in the Fireside Chat video and I go to Solid Tools and I hit Union, I'll get all that stuff, right? It will, it will get rid of the, these pieces because those lines cross over each other. If I union this with my outside piece here, I will get the intersections between the frame and my geometry. That can happen. But like I said, I want to keep this. I want to maybe make changes to this in the future. So what do I do? 
All right, so let's go back into one of these pieces. So the first piece is this geometry right here we want to get rid of. I'm going to select the plane and get rid of it. We don't need that plane. We don't need that surface there at all, that face. And then I'm going to grab the lines, and I'm just going to toggle visible. So over here in Entity Info, just turn that off, and they go away. So if I click out now, look at that. Already looking better. Now, here's the tricky part. How do we get those intersecting lines without merging all of our geometry together? Well, that's why we're here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything, everything except Sumele. So I have the frame here and my six repeating pieces on the inside. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say intersect faces with model. That says any geometry inside any of these groups, go inter find a place, any place that intersects something else and give me a line there. So what that gives me, if I look up here, ooh, look, I got the line all the way around the edge. I got some extra lines too. These two lines, maybe I wouldn't actually need. But look, there's my crease there, there's my crease there. All those pieces, all the spots that intersects, I got those extra lines. Like I said, I may get some extra based on, on geometry, so I might have some lines here that maybe I could get rid of some of these lines because they're not, I'm not sure what was intersecting to cause that but that's easy enough to get rid of like that. And ooh, see that, that looks a lot. One thing you're noticing, this is a little bit heavier line. If I go to my styles right now, go to edit, go to edges, turn off profiles, that makes all the lines the same weight. And look at that, it looks even tighter. That's just all coming together. So I can erase any of these lines I want. In fact, if I do this, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick all of my pieces as I come around like this. So I get my seven components selected and I'm just going to slide them over. So look at the geometry that created. So any place any of that geometry hit any other geometry, it gave me a new edge. So what I'm seeing here is not actually intersecting geometry. That means I can grab this piece, I could pull it out here, I could work with it, I could actually come in here and if I wanted to, you know, I don't know, I wanted to make a change to, whoa, not like that. If I wanted to make a change to where that arc was like that, I could do that and change the profile. Obviously, I'd have to re-intersect, but you can see I'm not stuck with just this geometry. I may want to do something like grab all those uh, lines, grab all those edges I just created, and maybe I'll put them in a group together just to, you know, for maintenance sake. Um, and then, there we go. So now all those are in their own group. At this point then, if I did want to come in and make a change like that, if I want to mess with my geometry, I could actually just throw away my intersecting line group, make that geometry, do another intersection, and get those lines back pretty quick and easy. So there you go. Uh, like I said, it's, it's not a perfected workflow, but I really wanted to come up with a way to, to maintain that. Luke had some cool geometry he was, he was spinning around. He always kept his original components, set it off on the side, just like you, know, like you should. But I always wondered, well, is there a way to take advantage of what SketchUp does and not have to make that solid union? Can, can, could you keep those separate pieces? So that was my solution. Uh, if you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. Have you ever done anything like this? Do you have any tips that would make my workflow even better? We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.